is Agenda TV. Sauti ya mwananchi. There are various reasons which show that Deputy President William Samuel Ruto will be opposing the upcoming referendum. This is because immediately President Uhuru Kenyatta announced last week that the country was ripe for the change of the constitution 2010. Deputy President William Samuel Ruto gave hints, talked about why the country is not ripe and does not need the change of the constitution 2010, which is basically a conclusion of the BBI process. Initially, there were signs that he will support the BBI and the referendum thereafter. That time, the system wanted Deputy President Ruto and his team to be on the opposing side so that on one side they are here proposing the constitution after the BBI. On the other side, the Deputy President William Ruto and his team is opposing. They wanted the Deputy President to oppose the BBI, perhaps even fund the team, but the Deputy President might have seen the trick and played on them because perhaps the timing was not right. But now what we see from his moves and his pronouncements and the pronouncements of his cronies, friends and politicians on his side, he is firmly officially on the opposing camp. Remember, he was also part of the team which was on the no campaign in the 2010 constitution. The uh, constitution which we have was passed with 68% of the voters approving the current constitution, meaning that around 31% said no, which the deputy president was part of. But the recent actions, his recent actions and words show a man, his close friends, politicians allied to him, clearly telling a story of opposing the byproduct of the BBI process. For example, Kitumba Murkome, senator and former majority leader, tweeted last week and said that he will lead the opposition to the BBI and the referendum which is going to come after that. Number two, Jubilee Deputy Secretary General, uh, who is also the SOI MP, uh, one Jacob Kositani, also struck the same call by dismissing the BBI and the push for the new constitution. Now, what does that mean? It means that the Deputy President and his team are focused now on opposing the BBI process that is into conclusion and the referendum, they will be on the no side. There are various issues which the deputy president must have seen that this is the right time to oppose the referendum because of the pregnant situation in the country and the anger that has been building among ordinary Kenyans because of many issues. And this, of course, will strike then an accord among Kenyans who are suffering and feeling the heat individually and as family. This means he, the deputy president and his team will likely use the situation prevailing uh, in the country to oppose the referendum. And the lines he is likely to use in opposing are the following and the reasons behind it. He'll be strengthened by one, that the economy of the country is in very bad shape. Kenya's economy has contracted in most of the quarters, the first quarter, the second quarter, and the measures which have been put in place are weighing down 
in productive terms and the capacity has come down as well as the domestic and foreign demands occasioned of course by social distancing measures uh, you know they are seen as dragging our country's output capacity and low activity while foreign measures have weighed down on tourism and trade now the increased layoffs due to depressed private sector uh, uh, you know are listing profit warnings by listed firms as well as high rates of unemployment all this have dampened the country's economic prospects and again within this you know we had a locust invasion uh, in the first place and then now we are likely to have a, so a second lo locust invasion that further clouds the outlook the GDP is approximated by economies to grow at maybe 1% or even lower in 2020. And this argument will be built around the fact that the economy is in bad shape. So this economic outlook itself is not good. And when it's not good, the ordinary Kenyans suffer. And when he suffers, he's likely to look for any hopeful message. And Deputy President William Ruto is likely to take that as an advantage. Second, COVID-19 has had a drastic effect on the economy. Thousands of Kenyans have lost jobs and others have taken heavy pay cuts. Thousands of families are suffering. Businesses have closed while others are merely struggling to stay afloat. The hospitality industry is in shambles and you know workers are in trouble everywhere. And we, 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 we expect that if things don't change, it is going to be very, very difficult. Tourists are not coming. Uh, and even the local tourism has suffered a lot because of uh, social distancing measures and travel measures and all those. And workers have been sent home. In fact, it is estimated that 1.5 million Kenyans have directly or indirectly lost jobs. They have become jobless. These suffering Kenyans, uh, you know, have seen it all. It is at an alarming rate. And these proportions brought about by COVID-19 and the containment measures put by government have not helped the situation countrywide. To make this worse, the funds allocated for fighting COVID-19 within have also been misused through corrupt means. Look at the camp scandal. And, and, and others associated with, with, with COVID-19. So, obviously, the Deputy President is coming in at the right time, in that sense, to gauge how his arguments about the same and how the government of the day has mismanaged the entire system. Remember, he has stayed away from those activities, so he can easily run away and say, I was not part of this team, and the team which has been there has mismanaged the situation, has corrupted the money, has mis uh, 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 placed priorities. And now what we need is something else and not to go into a referendum, which means more money. Thirdly, he is likely to use this uh, as an advantage to create a euphoria uh, with the current system or current situation for a referendum to gauge himself and to pick political speed towards the 2022 general elections, which may have turned out actually to be very, very competitive. In doing this, he wants to know, he'll want to gauge who are his people on his side, who is supporting me and who is not supporting me within the political circles, within the religious groups, within the civil society, within the ordinary citizens. Because Critically, in Kenya, euphoria is very, very important. And historically, we have seen Kenyans vote because of euphoria, not even sometimes on very substantive issues. And so, he will want to gauge himself on that. Fourthly, Deputy President William Ruto also wants to use this to test his campaign network. Remember, his, he needs and his making a campaign strategy. He has his machinery and he has support across the country. 
considering it's going to be the first time he wants to run for presidency. He will want to know how effective is my team, how effective is my strategy, how effective are those people who are mobilizing for me countrywide, from the regions, from the villages, from the counties. How best can I do that? How best can you do that? The best way is to throw caution to wind and move into the referendum with it, with a view of testing how that works. He will pick from their lessons. If he wins, of course, he'll be very happy. He'll pick that speed from there. But in short, he'll be testing his strategy, his machinery, his people, his grassroots mobilizers, and all those things associated with the campaign. So this is exactly what Raila did in 2005 referendum because he picked speed for the 2007 general elections that way. And we remember it was highly contested, but he picked his speed from the 2005 referendum. So William Samuel Ruto, being very calculative as well, will want to use this as a tester of how his system, how his uh, strategy is going to work. Number five, I think also, from where I see, DP Ruto will use this referendum and he's very happy to run on that, no campaign, to gauge his support and make a decision on the Jubilee party issue. Remember right now, there is contention in Jubilee, the officials, uh, he, he doesn't vi visit the Jubilee party and, uh, and some of his uh, cronies uh, do not visit there. There were even allegations that uh, there is a, jub a Jubilee, a silly house where they meet and, and, and uh, we've been seeing words thrown left, right and center about Jubilee and who is going to bolt out and who is going to remain. And this will be a best way for him to test his popularity and see is it good to remain jubilee or is it good to go and form his own party as a way of shoving his support and so this will give him impetus to form either remain and fight within or to go and form his own party and run for presidency in 2012 so in general those are some of those compelling issues which have made Deputy President uh, William Samuel Ruto decide to go to a no referendum, that he will be opposing what President Uru Kenyatta has affirmed that he will be proposing, and Honorable Raila Odinga will also want uh, a referendum. But the Deputy President, because of those reasons, want to use this as a mini election because we know referendums are a mini election to show and learn lessons from there whether he wins or he loses he will still learn lessons because remember 2022 is two years from now we will keep you updated and analyzing uh, what the political trends are and how politicians are moving from point A to B and what that means for the country on for yourself. For now, thank you.